John, coming into the fourth year of running the Mental Health Football Group, what does it mean, not just to yourself as community staff, but to the people who attend? Well, I think what we've found over the years is people have got uh, better links with each other. Uh, one or two of the lads, when they came along at first, uh, they were quite introverted, didn't get involved much, but now you can see for the lads playing behind us, everybody gets involved, everybody wants to talk, everybody wants to join in. So, so it's been, it's been real, a real success story for the football club. I know speaking to the occupational therapist just there, they see it as, as a part of the, the rehabilitation programme, part of the treatment, part of what um, these young and old, and some of the older people need as well. Well, just recently we had a meeting with the, with the occupational therapy people and they've decided now that they're going to build it into the yearly plan. They feel that it's so important that it should be carrying on that as from now it'll be reviewed every year financially and also as an ongoing concern. So that's, that's really good news for the lads that's moving forward. How difficult have you found it to get A, get it off the ground three years ago and B, to keep it running or is it something that now runs itself? I think when we started it was very difficult because lads were a little bit shy, a little bit introverted, didn't really want to come along and obviously the stigma of their mental health, people see it differently for what it really is. Now, as you say, it runs itself. The boys are here every week. We get between 18 and 20 every week. No problem at all. And the, the, the go and play in competitions, we've been to three four competitions each year and it's, it's been a real success story. What's it like for the community staff to be able to provide a service like this? Yeah, I think that's what we should be doing. I think this is one of the things that, that, that doesn't get a mention, that should get a mention. You know, it's a huge part of what we do and probably what the community trust should be getting involved in. Laura, how important is something like this in terms of the therapy, the treatment that you give to the patients for them to be able to come and take part in an activity like this? Oh, massively, because it's something that people do in everyday life. Um, it's really important for people's recovery to be coming out, socialising with each other and and the physical, the physical health benefits to it as well are just phenomenal. I suppose it's not some, something that people hear too much about, but you can see behind it, it's something they all enjoy doing. Oh, absolutely. I think that's shown by them coming week in, week out. The group's grown over the past couple of years. We've got a kind of a core group of regular attendees now, and they also meet outside of the group, which is, which is really positive for them as well. How did it all start? How did the link with Callow United Community Programme come about for you? Uh, myself and Tom, the advanced practitioner behind us, he, um, we set up a physical health and wellbeing group. So we've got different agencies throughout the community to get together to look at how we could promote the physical health of our patients, both on the wards but also in the community. And Carlisle United are really keen to get some links and to try, try and support us and they've been really helpful all throughout the process. Is it as big a as, as success as you expected it to be? Oh yeah, more so. Um, it's not just about the group on a Tuesday. The lads now go to a, a weekly or fortnightly, I think it is maybe, league in Penrith, Disability Counts. They also go to the North West Mental Health Football maybe two or three times a year. Um, and we're also looking at how we can progress it further, maybe getting coaching qualifications for the lads. Um, so it's been really positive. I suppose the really important question, have you seen an improvement in the mental health state of the patients having done this programme? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we were just talking about somebody there who hasn't been out of the house for a couple of years and he started coming to the football group. Um, he's socialising with people, his confidence has improved. Um, and Neil, one of the kind of key attendees, he said all along that this has really helped his recovery. It's probably been the main thing that's, that's kind of helped him really along the way. Claire, for the participants behind us, how important are activities like this? Um, activity in health in general is incredibly important. Where doers as people so if somebody isn't able to do the things that they want to do or need to do then their health will um, deteriorate so the people who are here today um, they've had whatever um, difficulties with their mental health um, and they're using this group to improve their their health we were speaking to Laura, the OT from Carlton Clinic, and she was saying she can see a definite improvement when people come and participate. Can you say the same? Yep, people smile, people communicate with each other, you see leadership skills, and people leave the house. Some of these people might not have left the house for a significant amount of time. Um, doing something that they enjoy doing um, means that their levels of anxiety or distress might be um, less, um, so they can develop some, some skills to aid their recovery whilst they're doing this. Now for a Carlisle United fan and a Carlisle United director, what's it like to see the club involved in a scheme like this? Yeah, it's vital and, and all around us, there's, there's kids here, I know afterwards there'll be the walking group, um, you've got a group here, it, Carlisle has to be part of its community. Um, we've got something like the Harrowby Complex that needs to be used um, and it is being used by the club, so for the club supporting activity like this and venues like this, it's um, brilliant to see.